and on June 14th, we're finishing the week strong. It's been a great week. My first full week back trading, uh, and it was a good one. We finished it off with a bang in Beyond Meat, B-Y-N-D. With this video, guys, I'm going to talk to you about how to – uh, how to identify momentum in a stock by analyzing the volume, okay? Because this Beyond Meat trade was all about the volume. And then once I, once we analyzed the volume and we identified the momentum in the stock, we then used some other technical indicators and technical analysis to identify some support on a pullback where we identified our buying zone uh, and executed the trade perfectly, all right, that was my my one trade here on the day, just because it was a good one right there in the morning. It was it was a big one, um, and I was able to just kind of shut it down for the rest of the day. So let's get right to it. Beyond me, okay, uh, you know it's gotten absolutely nuts since the IPO. You had that big gap down day where it got. It was I believe that was when it got downgraded by J.P. Morgan, <clears throat> and we've been talking about this 150 level. Okay, we've been talking about this 150 level. So here is the 150 level. And you guys can see we had, it was the previous high of the day back here on the 7th. Okay, it was the low of the day right here on the 10th. And then it was the high of the day on the 11th with the gap down. So that that's a gap entry point. You can see we tested that 150 again on the 12th and we got denied. This is a 15 minute chart, by the way. So the game plan with Beyond Me Coming into the day today, um, I had Beyond Meat on watch, and I actually said to everybody, "Well, guys, I'm not I'm not necessarily bullish or or bearish on Beyond Meat, but I said you gotta pay attention to this 150 level because 150 level is key." I'm like, if we get up to 150 again and get denied again, like we did right here, if that happened again this morning, okay, then I think Beyond Meat rolls it over. I think you're you're looking at a pretty good short opportunity, but. <clears throat> I thought to myself that if we can get through 150, I thought we had a chance to at least get up to 160, which is this previous little pivot low. Okay, so I said to everybody in chat today that, but listen, Beyond Meat is on my watch list, but I'm not picking a side yet. Okay, we specifically talked about that pre-market. I said I'm not, I'm, I'm it's on my watch list, but I'm I really am a spectator. I really am going to be waiting to see, um, you know, how this stock reacts up around that 150 level. And this is where that volume lesson comes into play. Okay, so now let's go back to the intraday chart. Okay, so here's the intraday chart. <clears throat> All right. Now, as I pan this over, so you can really, so you can see, see things nice and clearly. Okay, so here we are. Okay, here we open up. Okay, and then all of a sudden, Beyond Meat starts to push. Okay, you see Beyond Meat starts to push, starts to push, starts to push. What I want you guys to notice here, because again, this video is, is all about using volume to identify momentum. And you can see while Beyond Meat was pushing higher, the volume was fantastic. Look at this volume compared to all of that, okay, from the previous day. You can see how the volume is steadily increasing. It is consistent, strong, and steady. This is what strong volume looks like. Strong volume, it's not enough just to have a quick spike in volume. It's consistency, okay? Strong, steady, consistently increasing volume. That is how you can tell a stock has momentum. So as I'm watching Beyond Meat start to make its push, it was like 145, 146, like right in here, it's starting to make its push, 145, 146. I'm looking at this volume and I'm saying to myself, I'm like, guys, this volume is fantastic on Beyond Meat. Okay, I'm liking what I'm seeing. This stock still has momentum. By using the volume, Okay, and seeing how strong, steady, and consistent that volume was as the stock is climbing higher. That's the key too. The stock has to be climbing higher. Okay, so as the stock is climbing higher, if you have the volume is climbing higher with it, steadily, strong, consistently increasing, that's a sign that the stock has momentum. So once I saw this, I made up my mind which direction I'm going to play this stock. Okay, after seeing that volume, I said, okay, that volume just told me that this stock still has momentum. I'm now, I'm not looking to get short in front of 150, which a lot of traders were gonna try to get short in front of 150. 150 is a key level. 
Let's go back to the 15 minute chart again. Okay, here's that 150 level. A lot of traders were going to try to get short in front of 150. Okay, not to say it was a bad trade idea. Okay, but using this volume analysis to identify the momentum allowed me to get on the right side of the trade, which was long through 150. Okay, rather than me getting short in front of 150. So now that we use the volume, that volume analysis to determine that the stock has momentum, now it's time to identify our buying zone. So we got up here to a high of 149.60, just below that 150 level. Just not a surprise that we paused there for a moment. Then what I do now is I take my Fibonacci retracement level, I draw it out. And what do we notice? We notice that the 38.2 Fibonacci level, right here, here's your 38.2 Fibonacci level, lines up perfectly with yesterday's high. There's yesterday's high. We zoom this in. Okay, you have the 38.2 Fibonacci level, lines up with it perfectly. You had VWAP and the trade line converging right in that same price point. And right here, ladies and gentlemen, becomes your buying zone. Okay. And right here on this candle, this little red candle is where I got long beyond meat this morning. Here you guys can see at 9.52 a.m., long beyond BYND, 147.55, stop loss, 144 area. So on my stop loss, I'm giving right back down to the initial morning high. So see, here's the initial morning high. Okay, right there, there's your initial morning high. There's my stop loss. Okay, so I'm long right there on that beyond me on that pullback but you know identifying that buying zone is 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 great and using these technical indicators was great to identify that support level to know okay this is where it's time to pull the trigger i also want you guys to notice that as soon as the surge stopped and you had this brief moment of a pull in and a brief like little pause look at the difference in the volume okay you see how the volume slowed down that's exactly what you want to see. You want to see strong, steady, consistent volume on the way up. And then you want to see lighter volume on a pullback or a pause moment of consolidation. Okay. And that is what we use to say, okay, now we're waiting for the pullback. I got the pullback. I'm not aggressive up here, up at the 150 level. I know 150 is an area of resistance. I don't want to get long through 150. I'm trying to get long on a pullback into support before the stock resets and then makes its move through 150. Okay. So right there, guys, long at 147.55. Pan this over and then you can see we start to make our climb. I took some profits off right here at 150. I took more off at 153 and change. Let me go back to my chain answer so I can show you. Took some profit at 150.70, took more profit at 153, and then took more profit again at 157.35, okay, which is right here. All right, so here's the first take profit. So here's 25% of the position. Here was 50% of the position, and here was about like 12.5% of the position. I dropped a little bit more up there. Uh, and I held on to one last piece to see if we just really started to squeeze. Because like I said, you know, now that we were up into that gap, I wanted to hold on to one last piece in case we really start to squeeze to fill that gap. But we just didn't have enough juice. See, we just didn't have enough juice. And I just I just said, ah, you're right. You know what? I'm just going to cut this. What? I'll just sell the last piece right here, right before the bell. I didn't like this pullback. If we closed up here, I would have probably have held that last piece. Small piece. It's like 12 or 13% of my original position size. Um, I already locked in a big, you know, a nice big profit on it. So I'm playing with house money at that point. But if we close up here, I probably would have held on and looked for a continuation squeeze. But this pullback right before the bell, um, I was like, ah, you know what? Maybe not, not, not really worth it, but maybe it doesn't, doesn't feel like we're going to squeeze. So I dropped the last piece right there at 150, 70. Oh, wow. My same, same as my first take profit. That's pretty funny. So my first take profit, 150, 70 and my final day, I didn't, I didn't realize that until now And my final take profit, 150, 70, and you can see 153 and 157.35 in between. So we got a $10 a share almost, uh, on my best take profit all the way up here. Let me zoom that in again. So you guys can see. All right. So there's the best take profit up there, which is about $10 a share. And that's really what it comes down to, guys. It's it, it's really, I I came into this trade unsure, 
of if I wanted to get long beyond me or if I wanted to get short in front of 150. But reading that volume and that volume analysis is what made my it, – it, that's what made the decision for me. Okay, by, by reading that type of volume on the price action, when the, when the stock is pushing higher like that and you're getting strong, steady, consistently increasing volume, that's a sign the stock has momentum. And once I saw that, I was like, all right, stock's got momentum. We're gonna, I'm going to get long. Now, if the stock just kind of floated its way up there and it was just kind of hanging out and the volume really wasn't, wasn't increasing or I got a quick little spike in volume and then it slowed down again – I would say the stock doesn't have momentum, and I'm and in that case, I would look to try to maybe buy some put options or something when the stock was in front of that 150. But you know, recognizing that the stock has momentum allowed me to say, okay, now it's time to get long. And then now that I know it's time to get long, that's when we took out the Fibonacci level. We looked at yesterday's high. You saw the trade line, VWAP, everything converged right around that 146.50 area right here. Again, so here you can see this line is yesterday's high. Okay, there's yesterday's high. It lines up the 38.2 Fibonacci level beautifully. You also have the trade line and view up right there. And right here is where I got long, 147.55. All right. But again, it all goes back to analyzing that volume. So it's a good little lesson, guys, that, that you can really, really keep an eye on and, and can really, you know, keep in the back of your mind, especially with these, these low float small cap stocks. Um, you know, they're, they probably hold true to this rule the best. Um, because so much of that of of those small caps is momentum. I mean, when you see these small caps at low floats that are up 300, 400, 500 percent on the day, it's not because there's there's a fundamental, um, you know, justification for the stock increasing its market cap by 300 percent, okay, in a single day, or you know, it, it just it it's that's not why those stocks are. It's it's all about momentum, and when that momentum dies, that's when the move is over. So this volume lesson will really, really help you identify what stocks have momentum and which ones don't, all right? So a great way to end the week. It was a solid, solid, solid week in here. We finished, we started the week red hot small caps Monday and Tuesday, and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we switched things up. There was a little bit of variety, some large caps, some mid caps, um, even a super cheap one. Remember that um, INSY from just a couple days ago? And it turned out to be a really great week. My first week back, full full week in the books, green every day this week. Happy as hell. <laughs> and really, I'm just really excited to be back. All right. Have a good weekend, everybody. Rest up. And I'll see you guys all in chat on Monday. Take care.